Oh, the smell is unbearable. My house, I'm having to wash her beds every day. Can't allow Callie to keep going the way she is because the infection around that tail is causing severe irritation. This is a surgery that comes with risks and potential lifelong complications. It looks disgusting and it is. So that's actually Callie's bum and that is Callie's tail. In Isleworth, Scott is preparing for high risk surgery on a young patient with a shocking ingrown tail. The stuff that lies in there is really, really nasty. Good girl. Owner Shana is arriving, desperately hoping Scott will be able to give a better quality of life to the adored British Bulldog she's had since a puppy. Oh, the smell is unbearable. My house, I'm having to wash her beds every day. She's got flies around her. She's itching it and rubbing it quite a lot. It seems to be quite dry and bleeding. So I was like, please, Scott, help me. <laughs> Today, Shana is understandably nervous about the delicate and high-risk surgery. So stressful. I've never had to go through any of this with my children. They've never had to have surgeries or anything, so this is my first experience. She loves the squeaky bits, don't she? We'd be lost without her. She has been the best dog ever. Callie is like my child. I haven't got a daughter, I have two sons, so she's my daughter, literally. <laughs> So yeah, anything to help her. Oh, that's absolutely awesome. Ten months ago, Callie gave birth to a bouncing baby boy called Ryder, much to the delight of Shana and her sons. I really look at him. Oh, I mean, he's just so cute. You're not really a dog, are you? You're just sort of a blimp with legs, <laughs> aren't you? Come on then. There we go. Whoop. Oh, you're such a good girl though, aren't you? You are a good She's girl. She's such a nice girl. This is the girl that we did the caesarean. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She had her one son, didn't she? Yes. Scott hopes today's surgery will also have a happy ending. So you can see now, if you push that back, then out comes this tail. It's actually consumed by her butt. That is crazy, isn't it? Basically, Callie's bum is almost eating her tail. So it's kind of engulfing around the small tail that she has and kind of leaves just a little bit of it poking out. But really, we can't allow Callie to keep going the way she is because the infection around that tail is causing severe irritation. So unfortunately, I do need to perform an amputation. Okay, baby. Right, I'm gonna sort you out and when you wake up, you will smell better <laughs> and you'll be free of that stinky tail. Mm -hmm. This is a surgery that comes with risks and potential lifelong complications and I just really hope that that won't be the case but it's always a clear and present danger. It's not a nice way to have to live, is it? Being in constant discomfort. It's nasty. Can you hold that one for me? Just keep the tension on. Thanks. In Isleworth, Scott is preparing to amputate four-year-old Callie's ingrown tail. I am just making this up as I go along, because I... But the abnormal nature of the British Bulldog's rear end means he has to improvise before he can start surgery. To kind of grab hold of all of Callie's excess skin and pull it back to unmask this uh, rather unattractive tail of hers. So, I'm... Um, putting grappling hooks on a dog. Callie's tail smells disgusting. It is absolutely revolting. It's very gnarled and misshapen and it's sort of contained within a cocoon of skin. And as a result, it gets very mucky and very smelly and it causes her a lot of discomfort. It just goes to how abnormal this dog is that I have to do this in the first place. There we go. Right. It's going to be very tough surgery, this one. It's challenging when you're doing some of it blind. So you just have to be so careful because I could actually make it worse. So yeah, not, not fun. That's all. 
Hmm. Scott's biggest fear is damaging vital nerves that he can't see because of the deformed shape of Kelly's tail. God, it's so weird. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm trying to find the specific point to amputate Kelly's tail. It's really difficult because she is overweight. She's got a lot of fat in this area. It's covering the tail, so I can't see where I'm going. And I need to find a gap in the spinal cord space, which is only a few millimeters wide. So it's challenging. How's Kelly doing? Her yeah, heart rate's going a bit up and down. Am I okay to cut? Yeah. How's Kelly doing? Her heart rate's going a bit up and down. Am I okay to cut? Yeah. What I'm doing now is trying to find the gap between the vertebrae, so the bony sections in the spinal column, to be able to then amputate. In Isleworth, Scott is operating on British Bulldog Kelly to remove a deformed ingrown tail that's causing a shocking smell and a persistent infection around her anal area. I kind of need to do surgery blind really, it's all based on feel to find where I can remove this tail and I kind of need to go very carefully because there's a lot of important nerves around this area. It is possible that when you perform an amputation that you can cause damage to the nerve further up the spinal column and as a result it can render the dog not only unable to walk, but also the inability to control their toileting habits. Holy hell. I'm getting there. The pressure is intense as Scott reaches the point when the tail will be severed from the rest of the spinal cord. One false move could leave Kelly disabled. Okay, I'm actually nearly there to it's coming off when you see a spinal cord that you just cut through. There we go. One really bizarre tail. Removing Kelly's tail and seeing it in its entirety, it is so abnormal. It really is better off than on. That is not how nature intended a tail to be. Kelly won't miss a tail. The most difficult bit has definitely been done. I've cut through the spinal cord. That always makes everyone nervous. Now that's done, I need to just make her back end look beautiful. So I've got a little bit of removing of some skin to do and then I'll be closing it together. And that also will prove a challenge. But Scott can't be sure whether Kelly has suffered a disability from the risky spinal surgery until she fully recovers. through the spinal cord, the tail's been removed. Now that's done, I need to just make her back end look beautiful. In Isleworth, Scott has finished removing Kelly's ingrown tail. Then now that's all nice, clean, healthy tissue, yeah. so she'll be able to close it all together. And she'll be much more comfortable. And has reconstructed her anal area, which was constantly infected and smelling shocking. Okay, done. Brilliant. One tail amputation and one disgusting cavity now gone. Scott now has an anxious wait until the four-year-old has fully recovered to be sure she isn't incontinent or disabled as a result of the high-risk procedure. It's really tricky surgery, but I feel that we've got a good result here and um, hopefully she'll go on to make a full recovery. At the end of the surgery, Kelly's got a sort of little smile on her bum where this weird, disgusting cavity was. And I'm really hopeful that she's able to walk out of the clinic, she's able to go to the toilet and make a full recovery. Good girl. All right. Okay. In Isleworth, British Bulldog Kelly has recovered from her high-risk surgery to remove her ingrown tail. 
Despite concern she might not be able to walk after the spinal surgery, thankfully the normally playful four-year-old is moving freely. After a stressful day, owner Shana is waiting to be reunited with the girl she calls her daughter. I was really anxious up until I got the call. Once I knew she was awake and everything went well, I was a lot more relieved. I cannot wait to see her and give her a kiss. Where is she? Hello, Where's baby. Mummy? There. Hi. There she is. Oh, look, you've got matching me. toenails. I didn't notice that before. <laughs> so, I have removed the tail completely and then the cavity's also gone. It seems that we've managed to, to get away with it. She obviously walking fine. The smell is gone and I really hope that we're going to have a, a much uh, less happier. smelly future. Yes, and a happier, happier more comfortable. Oh, you're not that bad. Let's I thought she was going to be all bald. Oh, bless her. So basically there's just a small smile yeah. where there was a horrible, oh, nasty cavity right full of disgustingness. <laughs> it's so lovely to see the two girls back together, Shana and Callie. Kelly is the kind of daughter that Shana never had. So they have a really close bond and I know she would have been very stressed and worried. I'm very hopeful that in the weeks and months to come that not only Kelly will make a full recovery, but that Shana's house will be slightly less pungent. Okay. All right then, Shana. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Take care. All right, bye, bye. gorgeous. Bye bye. bye. Oh, I'm so relieved, really happy for Callie. We're hoping the outcome is that we don't have to keep making regular trips to the vets and from here on out, she has no more problems. So fingers crossed, that's the last of it. <laughs> if you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.